I, I have a very strong background of radio, so um, what we actually believe in, or our principle is, is that of radio being the theater of the mind, and I'm sure you've heard that before. So I'm going to ask you to sort of try to visualize things that I'm going to share with you because I don't want to have anything displayed there so I can get all the attention. Um, so I'm going to ask you to play that role and imagine me as, as being on radio. Um, as I was getting dressed this morning, I noticed that um, the label of my shoes, the sneakers, says that they were made in, in, in Vietnam. And my jacket says, made in China. My t-shirt says, made in China. Uh, pants, China as well. Um, socks, underwear, it says no name, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, but I've seen the no name product at ShopRite Checkers. Um, None of them essentially said made in Africa or South Africa. And that is something bothering me personally. That if I were to ask you now, how many of us in this room right now have anything on them saying made in SA? Probably none. Is there anyone? Okay, just one, you see? <laughs> or two, someone else. <laughs> and, and to me, as, as an African, and by African, I not as a black person. I refer to an African as someone of the African origin. It bothers me that we still have that situation happening so much that we have so many of things imported that we consume every day. Basically, my, my topic is, is creating our own made in Africa because it, it's very personal to me that we have Lesotho about less than two hours away from here, where the Gap and Levi's blue jeans are manufactured there, but you check the stickers, they don't mention a word about them, because those are not ours. That is not our product. And a couple of years ago, I had a chat. In fact, I, I read a book. Um, it's titled, it was very controversial. It's titled Capitalist Nigger, uh, written by Mr. Chigo Onyani. And the book asserts that the Negroid race is a non-productive race. He insists that we are, we are a consumer race. We produce nothing and consume what others produce. He scores the bull's eye when he lays the blame for the present state of the black race on the fact that his people don't possess what he calls the killer instinct of the Caucasian race and their lack of whatever it takes attitude. And honestly speaking, after reading that book, which was very controversial, um, if I could, I would make every child in Africa read that book because it's so brutally honest about our situation and where we are right now, covering the corruption and everything across African continent. So if you do have time, please do pick it up. The book is called Capitalist Nigger, just like that. It's black in color, all right? <laughs> um, Today we have a multiracial society in South Africa especially, which is a very good thing, you know what I mean? And personally, I think that it is our collective responsibility to ensure that we start creating our own things, pretty much everything. We need to start instilling a sense of pride, patriotism, and somewhat some arrogance as well in our own people. And, and start making them believe that they can actually create and make their own things as well. Americans and Asians are doing it. And right now, they are taking, the world, taking over the world, basically. And you know what I mean by that, because everywhere you look around, everything is done by them. I will do a little, I'd like to do like a little, little uh, experiment right now and ask you to, if you have your cell phone with you, just check the make of your phone. Just check the label where it was made. Because um, mine, at the back, it reads designed by Apple in California and assembled in China. According to reports, at the end of December 2013, MTN had 7.3 million smartphones active on its network. Vodacom's trading update for the latest, for the last quarter rather of 2013, reported they had 7.2 million smartphones active and there were 14.5 million smartphone users at the end of last year. 
And that is about one smartphone for every 3.8 active accounts reported by the two networks. Which between them, by the way, have about 55 million connections. Celsi and Telecom Mobile um, have about 14 million active connections between them. And assuming they have half the big networks proportion of smartphone users, they would still host 1.8 million smartphones on their network. And that brings the total of smartphones active in, uh, on SA networks to 16.3 million. In a population of 51.7 million, this translates to 31% penetration. And out of all these millions of smartphones that we are using, myself included in yourself as well, how many of them have a label made in SA or Africa? Zero. The smartphone market, you look around, you will see Apple, Blackberry, Nokia, Samsung, and Sony. And none of those are Africans. But there's good news, luckily. In October, um, Tech Central, there's a company called, called Tech Central, um, they announced that there's going to be two independent black-led companies, Siama Hale Telecoms and CZ Electronics, which are behind the, the design and development of the very first South African manufactured smartphones and tablets. And they say they should come out by the end of this year. So are you ready for that? We'll see. I had a chat with a friend of mine a couple of months ago about why do we not have our very own strong, powerful, and respected instant messaging service that is catering for the continent of Africa, for Africans, and made by Africans as well. Now, we have WeChat, developed by Tencent in China. We've got BBM, BlackBerry Messenger, done by BlackBerry Limited in Canada. We've got WhatsApp, developed in the USA as well. And according to researchers, Worldwide Works and Fuseware, more than half of South Africa's urban mobile phone users are using WhatsApp. And only recently did they actually know who's behind WhatsApp only after it was bought by Facebook. No one knew, no one cared, but we are consuming those products. There's partly good news as well, because we have Mixit. I'm sure you guys know about Mixit, which is our very own um, established in Stellenbosch University. And according to World Wide Works, once again, Mixit had 7.4 million monthly active users in July 2013, of which 6.3 million are in SA. And this is good news, but there's a problem, according to me, because in this room, if I were to ask who is still using Mixit, <laughs> you see, no one. And we could all have different reasons. I'll tell you mine. Mine is, is that there's a stigma that Mixit is for school kids, right? Right? So we use it and you get older, you actually grow out of it. But that is our own. It should be as powerful as WeChat and WhatsApp and BBM. But it's just there. We are not embracing it and making it a proudly African product and trying to ensure that all the Africans are using it. So I hope we'll have a day where we have our own um, smartphones where we can dictate as well that what we should be using in there, you know, are just what we want so we can eventually talk about creating our own and have a Made in Africa label on those things. We had iTunes come into SA about two years ago, which is good for the music industry, but it has limitations. And it's foreign as well, made by Apple Inc. But the good, the good news as well, which I'm trying to balance things here. About a month ago, one of the members of a popular hip hop band called Squatter Camp actually came up with an idea which might serve as an alternative to iTunes. 
where you actually, on any mobile, all you have to do is to send an SMS of the song you want, and then you get the, you get the, the link of the song, and you get to have it. No limitations. It doesn't require you to have credit cards. All you have to have is a time on your phone. His name is Slicker from Squatter Camp, and the campaign is called 3761, 37618 Store. And the song would cost you about 750, which is not too bad. So check that out so we can push the movement of Made in Africa as well. Now, TEDx theme is changing tomorrow today. And I think one of the things that we should use or do as Africans is to try and take advantage of the technology that we have around us. Because that could actually help us to get where we want to get speedily and achieve a lot as well. Now, in my industry as a DJ, um, as you would know if you pay attention to music, you would know that there was a time when, when there was LPs and vinyls used as mode of playing the music. Then there were cassette tapes that came in the 90s. Then there was a CD, which is phasing out as well now because we are moving into a digital space. Now, what I do as an entertainer or a DJ is to try to better my craft as well so I can be able to do my job better and easier. This that I'm holding, when I go to gigs now, I play from this. And as far as I know, as far as I know, take note, okay? <laughs> I'm the only DJ in Southern Africa playing on an iPad. I haven't seen anyone doing that, and it's been two years now. So I don't know what's happening up north in Africa, but I haven't been there. There's Boko Haram and stuff, so I don't want to know. Um, <laughs> So if and when you see someone in the future, I do recall what I said that I did that. Uh, but the good thing for those who still love LPs was that with Daft Punk's album coming out last, which came out last year, they actually sold close to a million LPs because people just went back to their records like that. So that, that was a, um, a very good thing I gotta say. And as well, on the technology front, there was a young man from Limpopo. His name is uh, Ludwig Marishani. I don't know if you've heard about him. He's 22 years old right now. When he was 17, he conceived an idea to actually create a product that is of um, waterless bath, where you could take a bath without using water. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was 17. He used his cell phone to actually research um, how he could put that together. And right now, he got the, pat the patent of that product. It is called Dry Bath. <laughs> he was chosen as the 2011 Global Social Entrepreneur of the Year. And his innovation beat out 1,600 students from 42 countries. So sometimes I think what you may come up with doesn't have to be because of passion. It could be because of the need of where you are, then you start something like that. In 2009, um, I have a company called Sheikh's Kumal Events and Promotions, named after me, of course. Um, I put out an idea here in Bloemfontein that I would like to start an event um, themed Mangaum Beach Party. Yes, a beach party here in Bloemfontein. And some were saying I'm crazy. Um, when I started, I went to Coca-Cola, asked for a truck. They gave me the truck for the sound. Spoke to some friends of mine who were owning a club to, to pay the venue for me, and I would give them the buy and return, and uh, I don't want anything from their bar. I, I called um, Kuli China, who's now in the US today, for some awards there, where he's performing as well. And they are, and I said to them, guys, there's no money, but come through, I'll pay you when you get here. I did the event, they came here, had a stash of 20 rents, I was paying them cash when they got here. And six years later, the event is still happening. Um, I'm even attracting people from the coast to come to Bloom 
for a beach party. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me, but yeah, you know what I mean? And since that event, actually what has been happening is there's probably been three or four other beach parties created in the inland area because of my event, which got me smiling, I got to say. One in Maseru, um, the guy who actually took the idea is a friend of mine. He asked me for permission, so I gave it to him. There's one in the Val, there's one in Kronstadt, and the latest one, I think, is in Mafiking as well. These are all inland areas. And believe it or not, ladies do come out there in bikinis. I'm not complaining. <laughs> um, so it's really amazing that you can conceive something in your mind and put it into an idea and make it happen. And speaking of things that I'm trying to do or that I kind of like knew in the industry as well, one of the latest thing that I did was to take the idea of being a hip-hop DJ and fusing that into symphony sound. We did a show about a month ago at Civic Theatre. It was amazing. People were actually amazed as well. But the reaction when they saw the poster out was like, what the hell is that? So as you can see with these mics now, what I'd like to do uh, to just give you an idea of what we actually kind of like did with an hour show. We have like a five minute piece that during lunchtime we got together and rehearsed. So it's, it was a very harsh, harsh thing. Uh, don't be too judgmental, but it's just to give you an idea of what we actually could do or did. And we're going to be having another show coming through soon. I hope you guys will actually come through and support us. So I want to, to call my uh, musicians, musicians to come through and, and help me do this. And I would like to, in advance, say apologize for some of the strong words from some of the songs here. Because it is rap music after all. But, that, but there's no kids in here, luckily. So this is just to, to give an idea of, of, of what we did, where we t we're trying to kind of like revolutionize things as well and do what hasn't been done before, uh, which is, and it was the first, by the way, as well in South Africa where there was a hip-hop show done with like uh, musicians playing such instruments. Mike will play with me.
The lady, that's like the song, saying that was amazing. So we timed it so it gets there, you know. Um, this is Ntlantla, Linda, and that's Leslie. So when I had the idea, I spoke to these two um, guys. He's still actually in high school, by the way. And she's done studying here at, at, at the varsity, and he's still busy as well here. So they were the first people that I spoke to about the idea of using the hip-hop into... Uh, what they were doing as well. So we were all nervous, we put it together. It went quite well, and we're going to have another show coming soon and tour possibly. Um, so please do pray for us. Um, <laughs> and in closing, I just want to say thank you so much. And I, I really believe in Africa, I believe in us, and I think we actually have so much potential uh, to do the magic and have labels saying Made in Africa and SA. Thank you so much.